okay? And then there will, there will be a, a sealing gasket, okay? And then there will be one plate that makes up the cell, okay? Then there will be a um, three millimeter uh, flexible PVC gasket. This is where the actual cell gap is, okay? And then there will be the outside plate, okay? Um, and that would uh, that creates these active cell component, okay? So you have you've seen a cell, but there's no exit, okay? There's no entrance and no exit. The entrance and exits occur in these um, polypropylene spacers that I've made, okay? And this is a simplified version. The actual drilling is more complex. Um, you can see on each plate I have two fittings for each one, and that's because um, there's an active cell pl plate like I just disassembled on this side and the same thing on the other side. I'm only showing you one side right now for simplicity's sake, okay? And it's very simple. This is the secret to the circulation. Um, I drill a hole edgewise. You can see what I've done. Drill a hole edgewise down to where the hole in the plate is located. Okay, so it matches up just like that, right? And then I drill a hole down through, not all the way through. It doesn't go to the other side, because if it does, then you have a breach in integrity, okay? Um, and I do the same thing for the top. And what you end up with, as you can see with the, the gasket in place, is you have an entrance and a gas exit. And that's the, cir the secret to the self-circulating BB Smack Gen 5 design. Okay, that's the, there are many other ways to recirculate your cell, but what I wanted is to make something that was relatively simple. Um, this is a, cell is a little more complicated than my previous designs, and you guys know that one of my main goals is to keep these simple so everyone can build them. Um, you know, that's why I don't do molding and fancy machine work. All this stuff is meant to be able to be built in your garage, okay? So this one's a little more complicated because when you get, when you get to the point where you've got two fittings here, um, you've got to make sure the drill, the holes have to be drilled at a very careful angle as so as not to breach from one side to the other. Um, that's craftsmanship. Um, it can still be done by anybody. You just have to take your time. So this cell is going to require a little bit more diligence and craftsmanship uh, versus like the Gen 1 where just about anybody can throw it together. You're going to have to have... Uh, you know, a drill, drill bits, and a really good eye. You're going to have to be careful because if you breach, if the hole from this side and the hole from that side touches, you have just broken the isolation integrity, and now you have basically a wet cell design again. The advantage of this guy right here is 100% current isolation. There is zero, not a little bit, not a small bit, there is zero current leakage um, in this design. Zero, because... The electrolyte from one cell does not ever come in any contact with the electrolyte from its neighbor. It's segregated all the way up to the bubblers, up to the top of the le liquid level, and then um, the, by virtue of the gas outlet, they are tied together. But the electricity that is supplying electrolysis does not travel through the hydroxy gas. It only travels through the electrolyte liquid. So that's 100% isolation. Okay. And um, I did. I chose polypropylene because it is a lot easier to drill than acrylic. And these complicated holes, um, cracking is something that bec can become a reality. Number one, and number two, this stuff is way cheaper than acrylic. Now, don't get me wrong. I still I love acrylic, and the BB Smack Gen 4s are still going to be built with acrylic. Um, so easier easier to drill, um, a lot cheaper, about half the cost. And also, I don't need um, clarity. Um, there's there's no liquid level. The liquid level is up here in the clear PVC, and the PVC uh, is away from the the cell body, so there's no worry about temperature. And plus, as you've seen from my efficiency video, they, this cell design runs way cooler. Okay, so um, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna crank up. I'm gonna crank this thing up uh, to 25 amps, and I'm gonna give you a chance to see. Um, what happens um, when the cell cranks up. Now, I haven't flushed the electrolyte in this, um, so there are some floaties in there. Um, this is the electrolyte, um, basically the original electrolyte. I haven't flushed this cell yet. This is the one that I used uh, for the, um, uh, 
the uh, genset test videos. Now you can see um, it, the blue uh, tubing is where the is the gas outlet. The gas outlet comes down in the bottom and bubbles up through. Okay, so you can see the uh, initial on startup. I'll get a little bit of foam. That foam's going to go away. That's just from startup, and you'll see it go away. Um, but you can see, hopefully, you can see in the video. Um, you can see the foam and electrolyte being pushed up these six tubes. Okay, it goes up these six tubes and then down through to the bottom of the bubbler and bubbles up. Okay, so you can see each like that's one cell gap. That's just one eight by eight plate cell gap. Okay, but there's six of them. So you add them together, right? You add them together um, through this gas output manifold. Okay, and it goes through the cup. And you know, right now, let's see, we're running, we're running about 25 amps. Um, that amp meter's uh, not really uh, accurate, but it's close enough. So you're looking at about um, just over two liters a minute bubbling out through there. Um, when the cell's broken in, it'll be uh, uh, 25 amps. It'd be two and a half liters per minute. So this is pretty close. I mean, I can I because I've done this so many times. I can look at that and I know that that's over two liters a minute. Um, I'm not going to do a measurement test because um, I already did that in my efficiency video. So all you got to do is go back to that and look at it. So you know, and you know, it's it's good gas. You know, as usual. Of course, you can't really hear how loud that is um, uh, in the video. But right now, um, I mean, my ears are ringing, so I don't normally do that without earplugs. Um, so that's what's going. On. Oh, and yeah, somebody somebody said I was faking my test by not showing the output tube, like like I somebody was claiming I had the output tube hooked up to a hydrogen bottle. So I'm just showing you here. There's no hydrogen bottle. I'm gonna trace this tube in the video right through, so you can see that this is the actual output of the cell. I don't know, people are always complaining, you, you can't make everybody happy, but I try to be um, as, as open and I fully disclose everything as much as possible, so, you know, there's nothing else connected to this guy, just in case anybody's wondering. Okay, so, those are, that's basically the construction technique, uh, some of the advantages, and this is what, what happens, you can see now, now that I'm, um, that now that I'm making foam in the cell, basically it's making foam, and once it makes foam and it starts pumping current through the cell, it pushes the electrolyte out and the levels in the bubblers rise. Okay, and when you shut the cell off, the bubble, the level in the bubblers drain through um, the uh, return tubes. Okay, so you're seeing that's what you're seeing right now. I just cut the cell off for a second. Now I'm turning it back on, and you see the levels go back up, and that's an indication that your circulation is working properly. Okay, so, and that's basically what you're seeing. And notice, very, very little foaming going on. Once you, once you reach, um, exceed the, the uh, um, bubbler water, the gas that comes out, I mean, there's almost nothing uh, foaming. So, the chance of getting electrolyte mix into your engine intake is severely reduced. Um, not to mention the fact that this, just like my Gen 4 design, this is a double bubbler um, application. So you've got one set of bubbling and then you'll have another set of bubbling. By the time the gas reaches your engine it is completely dry and electrolyte free. So this is 100% safe for your aluminum intakes and uh, aluminum pistons and every in your, all your sensors um, done properly. There is no issue with damaging or contaminating stock engine components.